Good day my dear YouTube friends. I am very sorry that this video is late. Later than normal. And the reason is that I just spent half a day, literally half a day at the police station. In fact, uh, the uh, Gendarmerie Nationale. In France you got two police forces, I understand. The police that's in the, who are in the cities and the gendarmerie and I believe that the gendarmerie is part of the army army police and they are mostly seen uh, in the countryside correct me if I'm wrong now the reason this week I was working in my garden and all of a sudden there were two police officers uh, knocking on my door um, and I understood it was for a traffic violation speeding ticket I had driven 85 kilometers on a road where you're allowed to drive 80 kilometers an hour. Terrible, terrible, terrible. And I wanted to pay uh, the fine uh, via the app, the government app, and it didn't work. And I just put it down and forgot a bit about it. And uh, I figured out later, um, about three weeks later, four weeks later, that you can also pay them in the tobacco shops where you can pay government bills. Very convenient. So I had made myself uh, already uh, uh, the appointment that I was going to go to the tobacco shop to pay. But that day, police were on my door and they were asking me about that trick uh, uh, that speeding violation. I said, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I uh, tried to pay via the app etc etc but this afternoon i'll go to the tobacco shop and pay there with a 45 uh, 45 euro penalty you know uh, not the end of the world and uh, yeah five kilometers an hour uh, normally people drive faster than that um, so that was not a big deal but they asked me if i could come back to the police station the next day today and it turns out it was not just to remind me that I had to pay that ticket. It was because for months we had been driving with false license plates. Now, how can that happen? When you buy a car in France, and I still don't completely understand the full procedure of it, but you change your license plates. You get a, a license plate number that's connected to your name and you have new license plates made at car shops garages and 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 you put them on as in your car grease that is the uh, official paper that that is part of the car you know that is the car grease is your is your official document vehicle document now we had that done last year when we bought this car and uh, only this year when i took the car to the garage for a uh, for a service the owner of the car garage told me that the license plate numbers were not correct and yes I looked it up on the car grease and indeed the license plates on my car were not the same now my garagist has changed them over but that was what this was all about funny enough months ago I got this ticket for this speed violation and they have tracked me down because I got the fine in my mailbox. So they have found, found out that the license plate was not registered to me, but still they have been able to send me the fine. So you would think, you know, if, if, the, if they find out that your license plate number is not correct, but they do find out where you live and a ticket was paid this is another ticket I got two uh, speed violations for five kilometers an hour um, but you would think that they would come to my house then and, and ask me why I have wrong plates on my car you know I mean that's of, uh, of course driving with false plates or wrong plates on your car is a serious violation I can I can totally uh, appreciate that anyway I was invited to come to the police office. Uh, initially, they said to verify that I paid the, the violation, which I did. But then it turns out the whole investigation is about me driving for months with false license plates. 
Spent the whole morning. Nadia on the phone. Nadia is at the moment in Italy. On the phone translating because they didn't have anyone who could speak English. Well, there were two officers that spoke English, but not my case manager, so to speak. Not a single word, and uh, I'm, I'm not gonna conduct any police uh, interview in, in my broken French. Uh, it's just not wise. But yeah, no, they asked me if, if I wanted to have a lawyer present. They've taken all my details, made photos of me, made photos of my tattoos, took my fingerprints, everything. Uh, whether I have any nicknames, when I, whether I was in a gang, it's Jesus, the whole thing, the whole nine yards. And uh, eventually, you know, I'm, I'm all happy with that. You know, I don't have to be off grid. I'm happy to be in the grid. No problem with that. Um, but in the end, I, I said, I'm, 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 you know, you get my full cooperation, but I'm not going to sign my declaration, which is written in French, because I can't read French well enough to really appreciate what's written in there. That's legal. I'll do it in English, I'll do it in Dutch, but not in French. I'm not going to do that. So you've got to have a, a, a certified translated copy and I'll be happy to sign that certified translated copy, but I'm not going to sign a French document that I can't read. Not only because it could bring me in legal trouble if any of the translation or any of the writing down has been wrong, but how, how can I do that? It would not even show respect to the officers writing, right? I mean, how, it would. what kind of validity would a declaration from me have if, if, if I would sign it when it's written in French that, and I, I can't read French? It, it just doesn't make any sense. Well, at this moment, they got a little bit nasty. And uh, they started talking fairly loudly, showing muscle talking to Nadia and they said oh we've been really really helpful and cooperative but uh, you've got to sign the uh, French version and at that moment I got a little bit uh, well scared is a big word but uh, I got a little bit careful there because uh, they were threatening that they would have to lock me up for 24 hours while they arrange a translator. It just didn't make any sense. Because I wasn't under arrest. I, anyway. Well, in the end, uh, what we've done is put uh, the whole uh, interview text, the whole process, the whole, uh, what do you call it, report through Google Translate on his computer. And, uh, and that was all correct. It was actually quite a good translation as well. And uh, yeah, I've signed it. Now what's, what's going to happen is that uh, his report is going to be sent to a judge, a magistrate, and he's going to decide on, uh, on the punishment really. Now, yeah, I, I, I have had absolutely no bad intentions. It's an oversight and I, I, I completely agree with the fact that you are responsible for making sure that your car is uh, safe to drive and legal on the road. And uh, I should have checked, uh, should have verified whether the license plates on the car were the ones as described in the car grease, the official vehicle documents. So yeah, well, I'll accept my punishment but uh, I hope it's not gonna be uh, I hope they're not gonna send me off to uh, French uh, Guiana I heard some really nasty stories about that now, yeah it's uh, there's a lot of bureaucracy in France so it's gonna probably take months before I hear anything back of this but uh, it, it, it does worry me a little 
Yeah, it's going to be, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure a judge will understand, you know, I'm a foreigner, I don't speak the language, I'm not familiar with the process of buying a car, registering a car. Uh, it's my first time. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I'll hope, I'll hope it, uh, it will work out fine. But anyway, I lost half a day. And therefore, this video is a little bit late. Anyway, let's just get started with the video. Good morning, my dear YouTube friends. Another episode. Uh, what are we going to do this week? We are going to uh, work on the staircase. So for that, I'm going to have to uh, put sides on uh, on the terraces. I'm going to have to put uh, drive poles in. Probably going to have to uh, relocate some dirt here and there. That's that's one thing, and then in 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 in, in uh, parallel to it, because I'm going to work with cement and concrete, etc. That requires drying times, curing times. I gotta have another project, and I think yeah, I pretty sure I'm going to start with uh, with the little house, all the the sites that haven't been rendered yet. So I have taken the measurements of. Uh, the stairs inside the house and I'll show you if it's not too dark. Oh no, it's not. That is a staircase we have inside the house. It will be removed later, but I've just used it as a reference. And the depth of the steps is 26 centimeter and the height is 22 centimeter. And this is, this is a, yeah, this is a staircase that, uh, that that's comfortable to walk on fairly comfortable and um, I have just traced the same measurements on this scrap piece of wood I don't I don't know you can see the lines but I have traced it there and now I'm gonna cut it out and then use it as a template and see how that looks and how it will work out 
Okay. Okay, so this is a little template of the stairs. This is how it's gonna be. Now, now I got to, because the whole exercise is basically to determine where I need to drive in those poles on the top level. There's no poles yet, there's no other poles, and, and these determine basically how the staircase is going to go. So, in order to determine where those poles are going to need to be, I need to extrapolate this template, basically, going up and then And then the last poles need to be driven in. Yeah, that's a good one. God, this is, uh, you really gotta think and plan. Well, the first time always hurts a bit. Um, we'll get there. I'm just gonna trace this uh, on, uh, on the wooden siding here. Because, uh, yeah, this is basically how it's going to look, huh? You know what? I'm going to make another one of these and then uh, screw them together. And then I have a much better idea, I believe. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Make another one too. Better safe than sorry. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm gonna do it a little bit different. I'm going to uh, make a more accurate template because this one is really not accurate. And I'm also, because I've just seen the angle of the staircase, I am going to uh, make the steps deeper. So instead of 26 centimeters, I'm going to make them 30 centimeters because it, uh, it just makes them more, way more comfortable to stand on. Uh, you have to balance yourself less and um, it, it does not really matter. Even, even if I have uh, 10 steps, then I'll end up uh, 10 times 4, uh, end up 40 centimeters, a bit over a foot further into the garden. You know, in the end of the day, that, that does not make a huge difference, really. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just going to be uh, nasty if, uh, if you've built the whole thing and then eventually it turns out to be a bit iffy, you know, and you don't feel safe and you can't walk around with a, with, with a, with a plate with, with, with glasses of drinks or anything. This, this staircase needs to be sort of comfy, not, uh, yeah not a hazard. So yeah, I'm going to uh, take this new plate of OSB and uh, draw it out more accurately. Um, in the end it does not need to be super straight and super uh, 90 degree corners. We don't want that. This is not this is not this type of house. This is an old cottage. You want to have it organic, but you know, if you just start accurate, then there's, you know, plenty more opportunities to uh, to sway you know, to veer off uh, the accuracy. So, uh, yeah, okay, let's just go for it. Huh? We'll just make a new one. Okay, so how does this look? This is not too bad. This is not too bad. So I'm, I'll, I'll probably need, uh, probably need one more step up. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta put the pole here. Gotta put the pole here. And then you gotta have this other headboard and then you're on, on the terrace. Okay, 
Okay, that's pretty cool. Let me think about it a few more times. Okay. Yeah, it cost me a lot of wood, but uh, it's worth it because later I can use this as a sort of a guide um, to fabricate the stone stairs, right? Okay, then I guess we uh, can start ramming another pole in. So I've just uh, rammed this pole in, given it a first coat, the protective paint. And I filled up the, the rest of the hole with, uh, with concrete. Uh, why not? At least I'm sure that it, uh, that it will stay there. Now, next step is uh, to staple the plastic sheet against the pole. And then we can uh, start with the planking. But, uh, well, that's going to be tomorrow because this concrete has to cure. In the meantime, I'll, uh, I'll take you up to... Uh, the top level because I haven't done much filming there at all. So it's a bit of a climb at the moment, obviously, because there's no stairs. And over the second level. And then we're on on the area that's going going to be yeah, a, a terrace, you know, like a, a, a sitting terrace. It's uh, yeah, this is uh, there's sun here in the afternoon, so that's that's nice, and uh, you can see this is yeah still a leftover. We didn't want to we didn't want to dig away that earth because we don't know how stable the walls of our neighbor are, because that's that's our neighbor's property there behind me. Yeah, so I don't know what we're, what we're going to do on that, uh, that area. But, yeah, gravel eventually. Uh, yeah, so this area where I'm now needs to be completely leveled out. And then uh, that root cloth on it. And then gravel. So we got uh, yeah, this tree left over here. Didn't take that down. And then we got the tree uh, behind me with the red leaves. Don't know what, what kind of tree it is. <sighs> yeah, that's, that's a look from up here. So yesterday I have positioned uh, those three poles at the staircase and uh, concreted them into the bottom. Uh, that's 24 hours ago. I want to give the concrete uh, 48 hours to cure before I start uh, putting the planking up. So parallel to that work, while the concrete is curing, we'll just uh, start with uh, rendering uh, the walls of the small house where they haven't been rendered yet. Well, this back side hasn't been rendered at all. Um, the front side, the street side, and uh, the gable end of the house um, has only been done from ground level up, what used to be the ground level. The ground level is lower now, so there's this uh, whole area on the bottom that I still have to do. So we do this side all the way, and then this end of the house that hasn't been done, and uh, the forward side and 
the gable end, I don't know what that's still called, the gable end when it's on the bottom, but anyway, uh, the head end of the house. Uh, uh, what I'm going to do, I have already removed all the gravel laying against the house. I'm going to wire brush all the, all the building uh, blocks, all the, the stones, just to make sure that there's no sand on them, uh, etc. And then uh, give them a quick rinse down. Um, not so much to clean, but more to uh, get everything humid, because that would be uh, beneficial for the adherence of the first layer. And the first layer is going to be a Reno Pass. This is a product that I uh, started using last year for the rendering because with a coat of Reno Pass on the walls, the final coat of uh, lime rendering will stick a lot better and it's much easier to apply. So it's a little bit of double work, but it's really beneficial because Rendering the walls with uh, this lime render is not a very easy job. It, it, it takes long and it can go wrong, especially when the weather changes, becomes uh, warm, etc., etc. The sun is burning on the lime rendering that you're doing, like we've seen last year in a few episodes, makes it really hard. So I think it's really beneficial to uh, reno pass everything first, let that cure, say 24 hours. Then you gotta shape it a little bit knock the, uh, the edges off, uh, the hard parts, the pointy bits, and then uh, start with, uh, with the final coat, which is uh, the lime rendering, uh, one part lime, two parts sand. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get started. Uh, this water blasting really warms your butt up. I don't know, it's really strange. Okay, now while that water can sink into the soil, we'll do the other sides. That's so so nice that I'm at <coughs> that's so nice that I can do this outside now. Last year I was doing all this mixing uh, of cement and concrete and rendering all inside because we didn't have the space to work outside. Now that we got this garden sort of done, I can do all this nasty work outside. It's fantastic. Yeah, and that's about the right consistency. Yeah. 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 I can smear it on very thin, because that's all you need. It's just a very, very thin layer. That's all you need. Now let's whack this on the wall. I hope I still got the feel. <laughs> it's been a while. But I kind of enjoy it. Thank you. 
right? This is this is such nice stuff to work with, you know. It's the consistency of, uh, I say, whipped cream, something like that, and it, it just sits, you know. It's really nice, and it makes a huge difference later on when I'm gonna stick on the uh, the rendering. The rendering just adheres to it immediately. Now, the re well, of course I had to do this job, but there's another reason why I really wanted to do this job. It's now spring, early May, and there's an awful lot of insects here. Really a lot, all kinds of insects. And uh, I just see them flying in and out little cavities of the house. Last year I had this problem with these bumblebee nests um, or nesting in the small house and uh, I hate to kill insects, I hate to kill anything, you know, uh, but uh, yeah I mean uh, they, 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 they're no good for the house, they're not coming to help me with the house so uh, uh, yeah I just don't want them in the house. I mean I'm very happy to make some insect uh, um, accommodations in the garden, you know, you, they, they sell these in the, in the, in the shops where, where bees can go and all kinds of uh, little uh, insects. And I'm very happy because it's really important to keep uh, these insects here, but uh, I just don't want them in my house. Merci Regine, merci. Yeah, these are just garbage bags because I run out of uh, plastic sheets. I do have paper, like a like a quite a sturdy craft paper, but the thing is that this plastic will just take the shape of the ground below, right? And it will just make sure that there's no voids, there's no no air pockets. Because air pockets obviously would create a weakness in in my concrete uh, structure. If the concrete is not supported because there's an air pocket underneath, that would be a bad thing. So, therefore, a thin plastic is is much better. And it's not the most environmental friendly solution, but then, you know, how environmental friendly is concrete? So you see the shapes that I've put up, which indicates me how high I should go and where I should be building and how. And this plank will just shift up, you know. We build one layer now and then when that's sort of cured, I'll take this plank and position it here and then we build the next layer. And only the, the visible sides of the layers are going to consist of the nice stones. Yeah, this is this uh, this is a three to one ratio. So that's three parts sand, one part cement. Um, looked it up online. It's they say either three to one or four to one. I've I've not mixed it before myself because um, all the other mortar and uh, concrete that I've bought previously was already mixed. Um, but yeah, I think from this year on, well, I'm going to mix it myself because I'm going to have some. 
different uh, requirements to cements and sands, you know, uh, with the knowledge that I've done up last season. I'm just hand mixing it first, the sand and the cement. And then we're going to add water and uh, get a little electric mixer on it. That electric mixer, by the way, was a very good buy. Reason being that uh, last season, if you remember, I was mixing everything by hand or with the big uh, concrete mixer I have over there. Yeah, I picked up this little uh, electric mixer uh, a while back from the little park side because I, don't, I didn't know how useful it would, was going, going to be for me. Because last year, last season, if you remember, I mixed everything by hand or with the big concrete mixer. But I find that the big concrete mixer is not very useful for the smaller portions because uh, you got so much wastage. You got, you got material that sticks to the inside of the barrel. You gotta rinse it out and it's, it's actually it adds up. So yeah, therefore I picked this up and this actually so far it's been really good. It's really been really good because it can do small portions um, yeah, and I, it, it, it saves me on, you know, my physique. Just mixing everything by hand, especially larger portions, it's, it's a lot of work. Yeah, Parkside, you know, it's a cheapie. But uh, with, as with many new tools that I'm not 100% sure of what I want and how I want it, or whether I will really use it, but perfect, you know. If it breaks down, you buy a, a buy a, you know, one from uh, Makita or another A brand. Well, uh, so far it's working. Yeah, 60 euros, 70 euros, maybe 80. Yeah, it's been good. It's a corded one. We also have them on battery power, but yeah, it's been okay. Some flat surface sort of stones on top and some smaller stones in the front all laddered in a thick layer of white uh, cement I'm gonna tomorrow I'm gonna brush all the excess off and then the uh, stones should come you know should reveal themselves that's the idea now I got a bucket of concrete which I'm gonna use to Fill yeah, some in the back. Bloody hell, I should have used the big concrete mixer, eh? Hey? Because uh, the amounts are actually quite large. So somehow I always underestimate volumes. So, and it's another day. Let's uh, see what the step looks like. I've already removed the plank. Looks pretty good. Now we need to scuff it up. So that is the first step. Yeah, I can, uh, 
I can still remove more mortar and expose more stones, but uh, I can always do that. I can always do that later. I will probably, I will do that. And uh, yeah, I should give it a good blast with the, uh, with the pressure washer to get uh, the colors all equal. You can see it's a bit darker here in this spot. It's because I was, uh, I was brushing it with a dirty uh, wire brush. But uh, you know, this has, got, this has got to age a little bit, you know, half a year or so. And then it will look like it's a hundred years old and it's always been here. Yeah, yeah, I will, I will brush it up later a bit more. Yeah, expose a little bit more rock, but we'll do that later. We're gonna start building the second one now. So the second step has come out, out of the form. We gotta tidy it up and shape it. And then we continue with one step a day because they need to dry. Um, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for watching until the end. Thank you very much for liking and for subscribing. And thank you very much for commenting. It's really, uh, really nice of you to comment. Makes me feel less lonely. Um, yeah, when you get lonely, uh, very strange things uh, may happen. And then I ordered four big bags of gravel. You can see that here, they were delivered on the street. And I... Yeah, and, and we, we want to avoid uh, these situations uh, if possible. Uh, for the coming two weeks, I won't be uh, here. Uh, now I will be here, but I won't be online. Um, I'll tell you later why. So I'll hope to see you in three weeks. Bye now. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.